Good morning, beloved. Good morning. This is Pastor Dawson from Zion Church of God here again with you with a simple truth. Today I'd like to speak from Ecclesiastes, the chapter 4, uh, verses 9 through 12. I'm inspired by what was said here, Solomon writing to us in these wisdom books about life in general and his observations about life. I'm always encouraged by Ecclesiastes and its straightforward wisdom and understanding of truth. If you'll see, it begins here, and I'll begin at verse 9. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up the companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. As we look at this, it, it would be important to really look at what he's saying before this. And he talks about the vanity that is involved in life throughout the entire book of Ecclesiastes, the vanity of life that is lived without God. He talks about all of the things that we pursue in this life and all the things that we could do. If God is not involved, then what is the whole point of it all? In the end, there really is no hope for anything of value, anything of substance, any joy, anything, because it's all just vanity. He begins earlier in this chapter, he's really talking about labor and how people toil. He first starts off talking about all the evil that's under the sun. And it's amazing because when we look out in, 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 in society today, we automatically assume that things, could, are, things are more evil now than they ever have been. But here it is, he's talking about the same basic evil that was, that was present in his time, about the oppressed and how they have no comforter and their tears are, are, are numerous. And, and how, he says, therefore I praise for the, he said, it's better to be dead in essence. And, and he talks about all of these things that were going on and he's looking at what is a life that is being lived that God is not involved in, that God is nowhere near. And he continues on and he makes an observation about even the striving and the laboring to gain and to acquire much. And especially when it's done in such a way that it's not for the benefit for anybody but yourself. Being selfish, living selfish, living etern internally focused. He begins to talk about how this toil and the striving, what is it really good for? Wise. Verse eight, there is one alone without companion. He is neither son, he has neither son or brother. Yet there is no end to all his labor, nor is, there eye, nor is his eye satisfied with riches. But he never asks, for whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This is all vanity and a grave misfortune. So in context of the believer, we must, as he begins to give us the wisdom, there is value in our unity, in our companionship, in our fellowship together. He begins to tell us that two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. In other words, God, when he created man, he says in Genesis 2 and 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good for that man should be alone. It will make him, I will make him a helper comparable to him. In other words, God recognized that we are not individuals who are to live by ourselves, identified self by ourselves. It is better that we be in relationship 
So therefore, there must be something of value in relationship and understanding as a believer our relationships one to another and not only one to another, but we are to seek and to crave that relationship because in it is benefit or good reward. Mark 6 and 7 says, And he called the twelve to himself, and he began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Even Jesus sees, Jesus sees the value of two going and ministering together, supporting one another in their pursuit to do the will of God. It's important that he didn't send them out one by one. He sent them out two by two. There's a value in us coming together and understanding our connectivity and why that's important as believers. Luke 10 and 1, again, reaffirms, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face in every city and place where he himself was to go, about to go. He was saying that you need to be united. Take someone with you. We shouldn't live alone and be alone in our mindset. I'm not talking physically in your, your, your abode and by yourself. I'm talking about living by yourself, in yourself. Unfortunately, this pandemic has isolated many of us, and it, it, and it has restricted our, our, our companionship and restricted our contact, but it does not, it does, we have to just simply go beyond and find different ways to continue to value those connections that we have, whether it's a phone call, a FaceTime, a, a Zoom meeting, if it's go stand outside the door, if it's however we can do this, we cannot lose sight of the fact that we are not alone and we shall not be alone, but we have power when we come together, when we find ourselves in agreement. I love how the Bible tells us if two touch and agree, they can ask anything. It's two, not one, but two. If one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand to flight. There's power in us connecting and making sure that we maintain fellowship, friendship, and companionship. Verse 10 says, For if they fall, one will lift his companion. But woe to him who alone when he is who's alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. That's, see, when we come together, we can support and establish one another. In other words, we can, we build each other up. We edify each other through companionship, through friendship, through fellowship, through connectedness. We edify each other. So, uh, Proverbs 27 and 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. It's important that we realize and value that when we're together, we can support and build each other up to be stronger, lifting each other up from where we were, taking ourselves, taking each other to higher heights in a better place. We can do this together a lot faster and a lot more effectively than you trying to be by yourself, the Lone Rangers, that Lone Wolf. That is not how God created the church. We're to find unity whenever possible, to find fellowship whenever possible. We're to find times for us to connect however and whenever we can. Ephesians 4 and 16 further affirms, from whom the whole body jointed, joined and knit together by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for edifying of itself in love. You see, there's, there's the idea that each and every one of us are important to the entire body of work. We're not just an individual on our own, an individual cell that it would, would try to be effective, but we must value friendship and fellowship and companionship. We must value the, 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 the great reward of coming together and being together and finding ourselves of one mind. Verse 11, again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? 
There are times when we find ourselves isolated and being isolated, it's, it's as if we lose sight of a greater thing. We, we lose encouragement, if you will. This word warm also talks about passion or desire. It's about sometimes when, you, when, you, when you're by yourself out lonely or, and, and doing your own thing, sometimes you get discouraged. But when you have a companion or a friend, they can reignite and remind you of the fire that was inside of you, the thing that was moving and getting you to move forward. Sometimes it's, it's good to have someone who understands the travails of your life, the things that you've been going through, so that at some point, when you get down, a little down, that person can say, come on, we can do this together. It's not like running alone when you got your own mind to battle with, but now you got a companion to say, Let's go. We can make this. And when they're down, consequently, you can do the same thing. It's important that we understand that if, if, if we find ourselves together, we can encourage one another. Psalm 133 and 1 says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. How good it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Companionship and fellowship and friendship is all about unity like-mindedness, like a, a, a mission oriented in the same direction, being evenly yoked, moving in a, a similar direction. That way we can encourage one another when sometimes life grows cold. We can be there to warm one another up with the words of the Lord, with the ideas and the compassion that's necessary for us to continue on moving forward in God's will. Verse 12 says, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Sometimes the enemy comes in like a flood, and we know the Bible says that God will raise up a standard against it. But we go back to the power of praying together, touching and agreeing. A friend can touch and agree with you and ward off the attacks of the enemy to help you to withstand the ideas that come against the very thoughts and the knowledge and, and the wisdom of God. Matthew 18 and 19 says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. You see this? One, two, the Lord, a three-fold cord is not easily broken. When we come together in friendship and fellowship of his in his name, he's there with us. We can withstand anything. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. He's there with us. So it's important that we maintain our relationships with one another. It's important that we remain uh, a friendly in fellowship towards one another. Beloved, Jesus is your friend. Jesus made himself to be your friend. Proverbs 18 and 24, a man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus will stick closer to you than any friend that we could possibly have on earth. So you first should find yourself in fellowship and find yourself in companionship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He died on the cross and rose on the third day, resurrecting, securing a new life for you. And as, me, as, as, as Sister Dawson was, was uh, sharing with me yesterday, a new hope, an everlasting hope for life. Sometimes we find ourselves as we're isolated, 
discouraged about the potential of what's going on here and there. But if Jesus is your friend, there is a hope, an everlasting hope, an understanding that with him, we will come to a greater end. All things work together for good for those who love God and call according to his purpose. We find ourselves with a friend who will stick closer than any brother. When the enemy comes against us, when he comes and everybody else flees because they're fearful, your friend Jesus will be there with you. He will hold your hand and encourage you in your spirit that you can make it through this, that there's nothing that will come that's unfamiliar to him. There's nothing that should overtake you that is uncommon to man. He is there with you. Make Jesus your friend if he's not your friend today. All it says in the Bible is that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Then you work, will you welcome into your heart his lordship and a new friendship with Jesus Christ. Beloved, I love you this morning. I want to encourage you to maintain and put effort in your friendship, fellowships, and companionships. Allow the unity and the blessed, the blessed peace of God to encourage us, one another that we might find ourselves successfully executing the will of God. May the Lord deeply bless you this morning. God bless you, and until we see each other again face to face, I love you, and I pray for you daily. Amen.